Welcome back. I don't really know what I want to do next. I guess it's kind of the, the joy of this type of game, though, is you don't know where to go next. There was a time rift that opened in the Battle of the Birds chapter. Yeah, that purple one spinning around. These are basically... What are What is the equivalent in Mario Galaxy? There's the, the comets. Yeah, I know where that is. That's just in the Dead Bird Studio area. Before I head to the Time Rift, though, there are some yarns over here that I never collected before. These yarns that I oh so longly yarn for. This one right here. Another brewing yarn, because clearly we need more of those. Conductor is very excitedly directing over there. There's another one behind this water tower. Let's try that again with less vibrato. Although I will say as a side point, just thinking about that all of a sudden, that I don't understand the appeal of vibrato and music. I saw a tweet by Temi, Temi Chang, that she was saying she wanted to learn some vibrato for her singing purposes because she's, she's, you know, a pretty good singer and she can sing on key, which I think is a lot more important than being able to sing and waver your voice slightly and volume, because I've, I've never seen the appeal of that. It's just... Maybe it's a sign of... Um, I don't know, maybe it's a sign of talent or skill to be able to do that well, but to me it's just kind of an annoying sound. It's nicer to just hear the note. Maybe not everyone agrees. We got two tuxedos and cowboy outfit and maybe a space out no that looks like maybe a bandana just observing the scenery might as well uh, even though these areas do feel a little bit like just an excuse to reuse assets I guess it's, I guess it's done pretty well because these areas have their own flair, they're not just the same locations as in the main chapter. Actually, I think I played this one before. Because this one feels familiar. Yeah, I remember this one. This must be the one that I played uh, in my first playthrough of the game. Is that... Yeah, that's one of those photos. Oh, there's eight of them in this one. I think the only one that I really want to go for, for 100% completion, is, um, whichever purple time rift is gonna be the one for chapter 3, because that's the one that I'm most interested in seeing all the way to the end. As far as I know, whenever you- okay, hello? As far as I know, whenever you complete the story of this, you just see, like, the conductor and DJ Grooves as kids, or something. Someone snuck a copy of Corgi Quest 7 onto this order, but it doesn't seem to have been delivered properly. Crate of fish instead of Corgi Quest 7? How dare you! I want the full release. Not just the demo, come on. Please consider me for the beta build of Corgi Quest 7. Anyway, yeah, I seem to remember these boxes being very familiar and a little bit too, I don't know, Just towers of boxes, boxen, moosen. I had a friend in high school who constantly quoted that Brian Regan bit to the point where it was Frankly, kind of annoying, but it is, it's a good bit, so I guess it's good to be reminded of it. I 
There's one down there. I guess that's probably a good one to have. Ooh, boy. Didn't know where there was going to be a platform to fall onto. I just jumped. Leap of faith. It's a leap of faith. That's all it is. Nope, wrong button. I have two things with what look like cat ears. Couldn't tell them apart for a moment. Can I jump in this? Oh, or I can... Okay, I just, uh... Did some parkour on some nothingness there. That works. Parkour, parkour, Brooklyn. I don't know what that's a reference to, but I know Big Tip has said it before. And a lot of the things that I say are at least with him in mind. Okay, we've got... We've got two pawns here. Because a pawn saved is a pawn earned. Oh boy, that I didn't see you there at all. It turns out, with these time rift sections, um, if you die, you get sent back to the first one, so your checkpoints only put you back um, whenever you fall off a ledge or you get caught or something like that. It doesn't help you if you lose all your health, which is unfortunate. It's not as forgiving as Rayman 2, where all you do when you fall off a ledge is lose one of your health pieces, and when you lose all your health pieces, it's like no different from losing a little bit of health. Okay, I don't know what to do. I think that's where I want to be next. I'm gonna wait just a moment. Uh, okay, that works. Nope, that's more stuff that I did not see coming, because camera... That that was probably my own fault, not moving that camera in the right direction. Still, though. Framing is important for challenges in any game. I'm glad this light doesn't count. I don't think I ever mentioned... I did mention that I saw a video of uh, the hitboxes of the guards' line of sight in Ocarina of Time, but I never actually described what that was like. It was really fascinating, though, because apparently their line of sight is a bunch of these large balls that shoot from their eyes. Instead of being a triangular line of sight like you see with these owls here. Which is more like The Classroom 3, if anyone remembers that Flash game. Obviously it was the third in the series, so if you know of the other two, then... you might know of the third one, but... the third one's just the one that I recall the most, because it was probably the best of the three. And we're back in here. This isn't even a... really much of an anomaly, this is just the, the normal place. It's where I talked about breaking open the TV and meeting Mike Hatsune. Is that it? Is that... I thought there was a door here. Oh, okay, this window is shattered. That's good. And something is leaking. Can't tell what. Looks like... I don't know, like, uh... Whatever substance the Silver Surfer is made of, if it... Well, it's... He's silver, I guess, but... It's like a liquid version of that. Liquid silver. It reminds me of something specific, and I just can't think of what it is. Anyway, there's the timepiece. We didn't get the full story, but we can see what we got. Yeah, it's them as kids. See the movie award. Oh, they rented the place. Don't know what happens next, but I assume they lived happily ever after, because we know where they ended up. 
Yeah. Another remix. What does this say? This is your bleeding edge top of the line audio device. Without it, you wouldn't be able to tune into all your favorite radio broadcasts like Acquaintances at the Table, Goodbye from Sunshine Town, or Two Brothers and then also a third additional brother myself. That sounds like the kind of wording that I would use talking to like my friends in direct messages. So let's see what we got here. There's the time rift in the big parade, which should be easy enough to find. Here where I got 32 points. Goodness. I don't know what a good score is in this level, but I know that couldn't possibly be it. The moon. Because where we just were was clearly the moon. Oh. I just suddenly have this outfit now. Yeah, we've got a Cosmic Mario mission. Combined with sunshine obstacles. What else is new? So, I was reminded of another story that I have with this game. Because I apparently have so many of these. Specifically, a story about Gears for Breakfast prior to the game's release. It was a while before that. Um, they made a tweet basically inviting people to send in job applications or to sign job applications or something. And I saw the tweet. I didn't really know what to make of it since I didn't really have anything to add to the team myself. They already had 2D art directors and I would have just, I don't know, suggested things, which is what everyone else in the community was already doing. But someone actually did recommend me. I don't remember who, but someone tweeted at them and said, hey, you should get Jonachrome, or whatever my name was at the time. It might have been John Bro. Said, you should get him. He'd be perfect. I just think about that sometimes. I think about that possibility of what if I was a member of Gears for Breakfast? What if I helped work on this game? That's a nice big whale. Very... Kirby air ride of it. Just thinking about the frozen hillside. Yeah, but would I have liked this game more? Would I have liked this game less? Would I have liked it more as a direct result of... having had more of a, an understanding behind the scenes of why certain changes were being made to the game? Would I appreciate the work that went behind it more? Or would I have had an even greater distaste for it because I still wouldn't have had much ability to change the game, but I would have had a more intimate connection with it even than I already did? Hard to really say. It's not worth thinking about, but it's something to think about nonetheless. Yeah. Oh, another one of these. I was incorrect, by the way, in my um, saying that these prizes weren't permanent, the colors. I've just been re-recording these videos so many times that I've forgotten what I have and have not collected. So that is my fault, I apologize. I don't know when I'm ever going to listen to the remixes, so I kind of don't know why I'm continuing to collect those. Okay, that's everything here. I think uh, Mafia Town is a good place to go next. Hmm. By the way, this um, font that is used everywhere in the game, it's called Curse Casual. Although, let me look at that again, actually. Okay, I thought that the font was slightly changed, because I seem to remember, at least earlier in development, the letter C was different. Or maybe I'm thinking of a different font that was very similar. There's two fonts that look almost exactly alike on dafont.com, D-A-F-O-N-T.com. And, uh, okay, that one's really easy to find. Go Golden Vault this time. Curse Casual is the one that I think they usually use, though. The other one I think is Dembo. Yeah, that sounds right. 
Can I see the beach from here? I'm sure it's somewhere. This is a nice place to start to have a general view of everything that's going on. And here's a yarn while I'm at it. Another one of a thousand brewing yarns. Let's slide, why don't we? Well, that wasn't the most uh, graceful slide. Just kind of ran down. <laughs> Who else liked to run up the slide as a kid? That's something that I would do all the time. Okay. There we go. It was an awkward pose. Don't really know what that was about. And once again, I'm probably not going to go for all the pictures because, again, the only one that I particularly... The only... Well, okay, I got one anyway. Probably only care about the Chapter 3 one. There's the Mafia who I imagine would give us a tutorial on how these work. Hmm. So, if anyone has any more interest in curious insight into this game's background, I have seen footage of this game's really, really, really early development, way before, like, alpha or pre-alpha stages. Or not pre-alpha, it would be pre-alpha, but alpha and beta is what I meant. Because in its very beginnings, its humble, humble beginnings, Hat Kid was basically just a series of geometric shapes. Her head was a sphere, her hat was still a hat, but it looked a lot more just cylindrical and thin than this, I think. She might have had a mustache. I don't know if she became two characters and one had a mustache. I, I, it's been too long since I've seen the footage. But it was interesting. Where is the thing? There it is. But you could still wall jump back then. So that's one thing that hasn't changed. And then there was slightly later footage where she looked a lot more similar to the way that she does now. Um, oh, I didn't have to collect that. More similar, except I don't think she had the hat, which is interesting. You'd think the hat would be the one constant in a character named Hat Kid. Well, the one constant besides her being a kid. That's kind of a given, though. Okay, that rolling does not make any sense. You can't roll sideways like that. Physics. No, oh, no, oh. Let's fall through the Sonic Adventure water. That has no collision of its own. Yeah, I also seem to recall... Um, early in development, the colors were a lot more desaturated than they were, or they are in the finished game. Because, apparently the default for Unreal Engine is to have the visual saturation be very, very much turned down. Because it's expected that you would use that engine for more realistic and gritty games. And so once they figured out that they could turn the saturation up again, it was like, oh, well now we can get the style that we want. And boy howdy is this game saturated. I do like the way it looks, for the most part. We've got our final smash again. Bam. Mirror Madness Tilt Slam Bam. And do we get another slot machine? Oh yeah, I forgot that we have this. Huh. Interesting. Alright. I will take it. I will take Thor's cap. Which is also known as the sprint hat. Actually, it's just known as the sprint hat in this. But it used to be the hat that belonged to the character named Thor. Who never had a hammer, as far as I know. Although he was a mechanic, I think, so 
he probably did have some kind of hammer. Just not Thor's hammer, except it was his hammer. Never mind. So that should be enough. Um, next time... More rifts.